in today's true crime and tutorial Tuesday I'm talking about Derek Bentley whilst doing my makeup so keep on watching it to hear about his case and to see me create this makeup look. Derek William Bentley was born on the 30th of June 1933 in Southwark, London. His family was decent and stable but Derek had his own problem. He suffered from a serious head injury when he was young and was intellectually impaired. He struggled at school and his parents reported that in a childhood accident he had broken his nose and since then he had three fits, including one in which they said he almost died of choking. The family also said that they were bombed out three times during World War II. And in one of these incidents, the house in which he had lived collapsed around him. But a court did not find any indication that he was physically injured in this incident. He found a pattern of truancy and petty crime and at 15 was sent to a juvenile detention home. Derek was sent to Kingswood Training School in Bristol on the 27th of October 1948. They administrated diagnostic tests on him during the time of his detention there. In December 1948, when he was 15 and a half years old, his mental age was estimated at 10 years and 4 months, when he scored 66 on a IQ test. Derek was released from Kingswood School on the 28th of July 1950, a year early, though he remained under the care of Kingswood. He was a recluse for the rest of 1950, rarely venturing out the house, breaking his isolation in January 1951. In March 1951, he was employed by a furniture removal firm, but was forced to leave the job after injuring his back in March 1952. In May 1952, Derek was taken on by the Corrigan Corporation as a dustbin man, and one month later in June 1952, he was demoted to street sweeping for unsatisfactory performance. And one month after that, he was sacked by the corporation and he was unemployed for the rest of his life. And I just don't get how you can be so, so bad at being a bin man or a street sweeper. Like, it's literally sweeping the street and like taking out people's bins. Like, how hard can that be? So, no, that's just why I think, in my opinion, I just don't see how you can be unsatisfactory at that sort of job that doesn't really take any skill. On the night of Sunday the 2nd of November 1952, Derek and a 16-year-old companion, Christopher Craig, attempted to burgle the warehouse of the Barlow and Parker Confectionery Company at 27-29 Tamworth Road, Croydon. Christopher armed himself with a Colt New Service .455 Webley Calibre Revolver the barrel of which he had shortened so that it could be carried easily in his pocket. He also carried a number of undersized rounds for the revolver, some of which he had modified by hand to fit the gun. And Derek carried a knuckle duster which he'd been given to by Christopher, who had been fined the previous year for possessing a firearm without a certificate. At around 9.15pm, neighbours called the police after spotting Christopher and Derek climbing over the gate and up a drain pipe to the roof of the warehouse. When police arrived, Christopher and Derek had hid behind the lift housing. Christopher taunted the police and one of the officers, Detective Sergeant Frederick Fairfax, climbed the drain pipe to the roof and grabbed hold of Derek, but Derek broke free. What happened next is uncertain. Police witnesses later claimed that Frederick Fairfax ordered Christopher to hand over the gun lad and that Derek shouted, let him have it, Chris. This phrase was later disputed in court as some people were saying that this was Derek encouraging Christopher and so it made him jointly responsible for the murder. Whereas other people said this might have meant that he was meaning to let the policeman have the gun, which in my opinion is what I think. However, Christopher fired and he struck Frederick in the shoulder. Frederick was nonetheless again able to restrain Derek, who told Frederick that Christopher had further ammunition for the gun. Derek had not used either of the weapons in his pockets. A group of uniformed police officers arrived and were sent onto the roof. 
The first to reach the roof was Police Constable Sidney Miles, who was immediately killed by a shot to the head. After exhausting his ammunition and being cornered, Christopher jumped 30 feet, which is 10 metres, from the roof onto a greenhouse, fracturing his spine and left wrist and had to remain in hospital. Both Christopher and Derek were charged with the murder of PC Miles the following day, the 3rd of November 1952. They were tried by jury at the Old Bailey in London between the 9th of December and the 11th of December 1952. At the time of the murder attempt and Miles's death, murder was a capital offence in England and Wales. Minors under 18 were not sentenced to death consequently of the two defendants, despite Christopher having fired the fatal shot, only Derek faced the death penalty if convicted. The doctrine of felony murder or constructive malice meant that a charge of manslaughter was not an option as the malicious intent of the armed robbery was transferred to the shooting. Derek's best defence was that he was effectively under arrest when Sidney Miles was killed. After his arrest in November 1952, further IQ tests were administrated to him at Brixton Prison. He was described there as borderline feeble-minded with a verbal score of 71, a performance IQ of 87 and a full scale IQ of 77. He was discovered to still be quite illiterate at the time of his arrest in November 1952. The prison medical officer said he cannot even recognise or write down all the letters of the alphabet. The case for the prosecution was that Derek had a history of criminality, having been in youth detention and that he had a low level of intelligence, but that he was not insane and he was aware of and responsible for his actions. The case for the defence was that Derek didn't have a weapon and that he handed himself over to police and also the fact that he had a learning disability and a mental age of 10. The jury took 75 minutes to decide that both Christopher and Derek were guilty of Miles' murder with a plea for mercy for Derek. Derek was sentenced to death whilst Christopher was ordered to be detained at Her Majesty's pleasure. He was eventually released in May 1963 after serving 10 years imprisonment. He married two years later and subsequently became a plumber. Derek was originally ordered to be hanged on the 30th of December 1952, but this was postponed to allow for an appeal. <laughs> Derek's lawyers filed appeals highlighting the ambiguities of the ballistic evidence, Derek's mental age and the fact that he did not fire the fatal shot. Derek's appeal was to be heard on the 13th of January 1953 and was unsuccessful. At 9am on the 28th of January 1953, Derek was hanged at Wandsworth Prison, London. There were protests outside the prison and two people were arrested and fined for damage to property. In 1975, significant changes were made to the law regarding murder. The Homicide Act made the allowance for defendants suffering from diminished responsibility or who had been abused by the person that they murdered. In these cases, the murder charge would be reduced to manslaughter, which was not punishable by death. And in March 1966, Derek's remains were removed from Wandsworth and re interred in a family grave in Croydon Cemetery. On the 29th of July 1993, Derek was granted a royal pardon in respect of the sentence of death passed upon him and carried out. Eventually, on the 30th of July 1998, the Court of Appeal quashed Derek's conviction for murder and Christopher Craig, by then was aged 62, issued a statement welcoming the pardon for Derek, stating that his innocence has now been proved. He also apologised to the families of both PC Miles and Derek for his actions, as well as his own family, for the press intrusion that they had suffered over the years and the lingering sense of injustice surrounding Derek Bentley's execution greatly strengthened opposition to the death penalty, eventually leading to its abolition in the UK in 1966. The death penalty in the UK has not been reintroduced despite significant public support for it to be brought back. And that's everything for today's case, so I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one.